Last week, I called my friends Philip and Veronica. Normally, I would have been to visit them in Vienna over the last year, but now we talk on FaceTime, largely about what we're writing and what we're reading. On our recent call, Philip referred to an article by Peter Scheldahl about missing the ability to visit galleries and see the works of the old masters. Yet purely by existing, Scheldahl writes, these paintings, even viewed online, can still stir associations and precipitate meanings that may resonate in this plague time. The canvases in question were, after all, created in other times of plague. At the end of our chat, Philip summed it up perfectly. Art without death is kitsch. It's even better in German. Kunst ohne Tod ist kitsch. But then life without death is also meaningless, a thought I've had frequently while writing a book about the plague time. And not only plague, but also climate change due to the Little Ice Age and breaking away from our neighbours thanks to the Reformation rather than Brexit. Earlier plagues were much more vicious than the current pandemic. An outbreak in 1603 killed 16% 16 of all Londoners, the equivalent of 1.5 million people today. Yet at the time, the population faced this inevitability with relative composure, even creating artworks to help them. We've gained lots over 400 years, but also lost so much. And I think that loss can be summed up in two words. Joyful hope. They come from the mass. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope. When we shy away from death, both its appalling energies and the redemptive light seen in those old paintings, I wonder whether, consequently, we fetishise life rather than living it. C.S. Lewis put it beautifully. The pain I feel now is the happiness I had before, yet the opposite is also the case. The pain now is the happiness we hope to have hereafter. And the old masters knew it, as W.H. Auden wrote. About suffering, they were never wrong.